This Week at NASA. As the STS-122 mission came to a successful end with the landing of Shuttle Atlantis, Main gear touchdown. Space Shuttle Endeavour is in place on Launch Pad 39A, being readied for mission STS-123. Endeavour will carry the pressured segment of the Kibo Japanese Experiment Logistics Module, plus Space Lab Pallet 1, which will be deployed by Dexter, Canada's special purpose dexterous manipulator. STS-123 is commanded by Dom Gorey. The seven-member crew is slated to begin its 16-day mission in early March. The National Space Science and Technology Center at Marshall has teamed up with the University of Alabama, Birmingham on a special health study. The study, funded by the National Institute of Health, is called REGARDS, Reasons for Geographic and Racial Differences in Stroke. More than 30,000 people are being served by African Americans because of their higher risk of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and stroke. Using NASA remote sensing satellite data, UAB hopes to learn more about the impact of air quality, heat indexes, temperature, humidity, and other environmental elements on the diseases and conditions targeted in the study. The Ames Research Center hosted its annual Next Generation Exploration Conference for Emerging Space Leaders. The group discussed innovative approaches to the future of space exploration. The conference focused on opportunities for entrepreneurs in lunar development. Young leaders in space technology collaborated with NASA senior management and generated ideas they presented to the Exploration Systems Mission Directorate Commercial Development Policy Group and the Innovative Partnerships Program Office. Four years ago this week, on February 26, 2004, the Expedition 8 crew of Commander Mike Fole and Flight Engineer Alexander Kaleri performed the first spacewalk outside the International Space Station without a human crew member inside. The duo completed a number of crucial tasks during their three-hour, 55-minute EVA. Jan Berkeley grew up in Altadena, California, only two miles from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. As a child, Berkeley was interested in engineering, computers, and astronomy, and curious about the projects undertaken by JPL. She received first-hand experience as a summer intern for NASA's Galileo mission. After earning an electrical engineering degree from the University of Southern California, Berkeley returned to JPL to begin a career as an engineer. Her 20-year career in spacecraft development, tests, and operations has included work on Galileo, Deep Space One, and Cassini missions. Berkeley currently is a lead for Cassini mission operations, which creates onboard sequences, sends commands to the spacecraft, and monitors real-time data. I really do like my work, and I don't get a real appreciation about it until I talk, to, mostly when I talk to children, when, when I tell them what I do and they get excited, oh, this is the space ladies coming to talk to us. Berkeley says one of her role models was the Star Trek TV character, Lieutenant Uhura. Here is this woman, she was the only woman, and she was a black female. She was working with all these different people, you know, different races, different, you know, species even. And she's just doing her job. I knew she was closely tied to the facility, and I wanted to meet her, and I finally got to meet her. Almost anybody can be a role model. If you see someone who's doing something that you would really like to do or learn how to do, that person can be a role model. But when they look just like you, it makes a difference. And that's This Week at NASA. <laughs>